So this is a screencast inspired by uh, a, a code, some code that was submitted to me by um, one of my students. And I want to discuss uh, a little bit about DOM manipulation in JavaScript and uh, performance. I will first, will first take a look at the code. So this is the, uh, the code that was uh, a simplified version of what the code um, that was submitted to me by uh, the student. There is an empty select element uh, with a name and an ID. And the um, student is um, trying to uh, append a list of uh, options uh, dynamically in this list. So instead of hard coding the value, he has uh, an array list. This is just also a, a trimmed down version of the initial uh, list. There are five uh, city names here in this array. And um, he's then uh, using the document query selector to get the select element. And then um, uh, he's iterating over the city's array. And for each city name, he's uh, using the dot inner html method for this select element and then uh, in its iteration he's appending this uh, markup inside the select element so for each city name uh, a new option uh, element with a city name value and a city name uh, description is being appended to the inner html so um, this is the result of the code. We have a select element with five options, uh, all of them created dynamically. Of course, the initial list was uh, much uh, larger. But there's uh, <coughs> one um, thing that can we can change in this code and make this more performant. I'm going to go to the example code that I'm using here. And uh, in this uh, web page, let's see what the web page looks like. So I have these four uh, buttons and uh, the first two, uh, each of them runs a function which appends uh, 1000 list items to a non-ordered list uh, element. So the create slow button will run a function that will append 1000 list items to an unordered list. The create fast button will use a much more performant version of this function. So let's go to the markup. These are the four buttons. Uh, this is the unordered list eight uh, element. It's empty. As you can see, there's an ID uh, data list. And let's jump to our JavaScript code. All of the code runs inside this anonymous function that is being executed after the DOM content loaded event has been fired, which means all the document elements are ready and in place. So um, we are getting the unordered list element using the query selector, and uh, I'm get we're getting this by the, uh, the ID. We're storing it in a variable, and then we're creating an array with 1000 elements. So this is a neat trick that you can use uh, to create an array with 1000 elements. Uh, each of them has the undefined value assigned to it. So it's just a uh, big array with 1000 undefined um, elements. And then we're uh, I'm defining two versions, uh, the slow version function and fast version function. Each of them does the same thing in a different way. Each of these two functions is appending 1000 elements uh, to the unordered list. And each of this function gets called when uh, either one or the other uh, button is being clicked. So I'm, having, uh, I'm getting the first button, I'm adding an event listener on the click event and executing the slow version uh, when the user clicks this button and the fast version when the user clicks the um, the other button. There's a third button which just uh, when clicked it just clears the 
uh, contents of the data list element. So this is just to clear the uh, unordered list and rerun the um, the functions again. So uh, first, let's look at the slow version. This is almost identical to the uh, example I showed you earlier. Uh, in the beginning and the end of this function, I'm using the console time and console time end functions to um, get uh, register the time that it takes for this function to uh, to run and complete. So uh, I'm using the same label here in the time and time end uh, console uh, functions methods, um, and then inside this uh, two console methods I'm iterating over this huge array uh, as you remember it contains 1000 time uh, elements it will run 1000 times and for its uh, array entry it will uh, use the inner HTML function to insert this list item with a random number inside so let's see how this performs so first of all I'm going to click the create slow and after uh, a couple of milliseconds, I'm getting a huge uh, unordered list with 1,000 list items, uh, each one containing a random number. You can see here in the console, we can see that this operation took about took more than one second to complete. This is um, the time in milliseconds, as it was logged by the console time uh, function. And one other thing I want you to notice is that while I'm uh, hitting this uh, button, all other elements in the interface will be unusable. So uh, I want you to take a look at this click me button, which uh, I won't be able to click while this function is running. So as you can see, while I was uh, this slow function was running, the click me button was unusable. So uh, this means that this is not only a slow code, but it's also blocking code. Uh, while this code runs, it's been executed, all other interactions are being disabled in this page. The user cannot interact with the rest of the page or the elements. Scroll, click, or do whatever. This is the slow version. And uh, before going to see how we can improve this function to make this run faster, I'm going to uh, go to this article uh, and the link to this article uh, will be uh, pasted in the, you will find it in the description of this video. So this article is called Improving the Performance of Your HTML5 App. It's a really nice article. I recommend that you read all of the, uh, of the post. And what is of interest to us right now is the section which says move DOM manipulation out of loops. Uh, this section says loops are often hot points for optimization. Try to think of ways to decouple actual number crunching to working with the DOM. It is often possible to do a calculation and then after it is done apply all the results in one go. This is crucial. So there is a sample code here which I have applied to my code. So I'm getting this slow version and rewriting this uh, function using the following code. So instead of running this really, really costly operation, the inner HTML operation uh, a thousand times, I'm moving the uh, inner HTML operation outside of the loop. So um, the trick that we can use here is that we can create uh, an empty uh, variable, a string variable, with uh, just an empty string as its content. And then for its array uh, iteration, we're just appending uh, this string to the content variable. So in here, in this loop, instead of running this really, really costly operation, this, really, this is a really heavy operation which requires the browser to re-render and update the, the DOM. We're just concatenating a string. So we're adding uh, an li uh, string with a random number inside this variable. After this loop uh, finishes, uh, which will, as you can see, you will see in a second, uh, it's, it's really fast, 
we are appending uh, this huge string to the data list element using the inner HTML method. So instead of running this command a thousand times, we're just running it after the loop. And you will see that it has a great impact on the uh, performance. So before running the fast version, let's again run the slow version. You can see it takes about more than one second to finish. Now I will clear this uh, unordered list and run the fast function. And as you can see, it runs uh, under four seconds, it on, uh, milliseconds, I'm sorry. So it runs in about three milliseconds. The same thing is being uh, appended and rendered to the browser. And uh, of course the user has uh, instant access to the rest of the um, elements and he's able to interact with the interface. Just a small um, uh, change, uh, refactoring in our code, you have a huge performance gain. Whenever you, uh, as a takeaway, I, I think uh, whenever you create or you have a loop somewhere in your code, uh, even if it works uh, properly, you have to take some time, study the code and see if you can move some uh, operations uh, that cost, that take time and uh, CPU to, uh, uh, to move them out of the loop and um, in this way have a more um, performant code. You will find the description, the link to the article in the description of this video, and you will also find a, a gist, a GitHub um, uh, with a um, link for this code. Uh, thank you for watching and let me know if you uh, have something to add uh, in the comments area. Thank you very much.